Believe it or not, it still comes down to good old-fashioned history. So at Howard County General Hospital, our emergency medicine physicians work very closely with a group of neurologists who are on call 24 hours a day. Uh, the key is the history. They'll uh, come very quickly and find out when was the patient last seen normal. And they'll ask questions trying to see if they have some of the classic patterns like stop speaking in the right side is weak. That suspects the stroke. Then you're going to go right back and get a CAT scan. But the key thing here is CAT scanners don't see strokes right away. So in order to get the TPA, we want to see the CAT scan to be normal. It's more of a, on the history, what the person or the family describes, and the examination. There's certain classic patterns. If we see that and we're within the four and a half hour window, we're going to be suggesting that we give the intravenous uh, clot buster drug, the TPA. Now an MRI scanner is an amazing piece of technology and that can see the stroke, but that takes time. So at a community hospital or even at Johns Hopkins Hospital, you're gonna get a CAT scan and then they're, they're going to examine you just the way we were taught in medical school and that's how we make the decision. The signs of the stroke depends upon what region of the brain the artery was feeding. So very typical ones are sudden onset of abnormal speech or loss of speech. Another might be the sudden onset of weakness or numbness on one side of the body. Other people experience the sudden onset of severe imbalance. And then there's a rare form of stroke where you just suddenly stop seeing off to one side. Well, one of the big victories was actually uh, in the 90s uh, when a drug called TPA uh, was approved for use in acute ischemic stroke. And that's a, a drug that dissolves blood clots. And that was a huge revolution. And that led to the creation of certified stroke centers and what's called brain attack teams. Uh, this drug has to be given within a few hours of onset of the stroke. Uh, so that was huge. Now most recently was what happens to people where the TPA drug was ineffective uh, or perhaps uh, didn't completely uh, dissolve the blood clot. And there's a variety of new devices that an interventional radiologist or neurosurgeon can use to go into the groin, up directly into your head under x-ray guidance, grab the clot and pull it out. And that was, those studies were all published just a couple of years ago, and that's been the second revolution in acute stroke care, because now primary stroke centers, like Howard County General Hospital, we have the ability to give the, the drug intravenously quickly. But if it's not fully effective, then we'll be working with the Johns Hopkins Comprehensive Stroke Centers, there's two, and a helicopter will arrive and off you go. And we've had some amazing cases where they've gone right up and pulled the clot right out of someone's head. One of the messages we like to give the general public, we say uh, that stroke is preventable, stroke is treatable, and stroke is survivable. So preventable is controlling those risk factors, taking an aspirin a day, diet and exercise. Treatable is the intravenous TPA and activating the brain attack system. So then there's survivable. So patients recover from stroke. Now there are some patients who don't recover that much and they remain paralyzed and disabled. Uh, stroke is one of the leading causes of disability in the United States. That being said, there are also a lot of stroke patients who recover very nicely and they go through a whole complex process of rehabilitation, often inpatient first and then home-based and then outpatient. And they benefit from all three of the major disciplines. Physical therapy, which is mostly about walking. Occupational therapy, which we say is the activities of daily living. So that's feeding, dressing, and bathing yourself. And then speech therapy, which is both language and then chewing and swallowing. And they work as a team. Once a person has been brought to the hospital, treated as best we can, then we have physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy evaluate them, and then they make recommendations based upon their expertise for the level of rehab. 
that's when we start involving the families right away. Because as soon as you arrive at a rehab center, literally on the first day, they're going to be sitting down with the family talking about going home. And it's not that you're going to go home the next day. It's the family as it has to be an integral part of this team because we have to train them to be the caregivers, typically. I mean, occasionally there's a family that's wealthy enough and they can hire help. But for most families, uh, it's, you can learn how to transfer people from a bed to a wheelchair, from a wheelchair into a car. And you can achieve, um, you know, a uh, great quality of life. So they, at the, in, in the inpatient rehab stay, then the family gets pulled in very quickly.